um, the voice channel for a second. Um, think about social distancing. We're all, most of us working from home or uh, customers stuck at home. Um, and this is, a, th this is a time of crisis. You know, these topics that are coming up are, could be life and death if I'm feeling sick. It could be um, that I lost my job. It could be that um, I can't make a payment. These are critical questions, not your standard, um, you know, everyday inquiries. And uh, people want to talk to somebody. And the phone is really a critical channel for these urgent or, or life-altering questions and, and situations. So we want to make sure the phone channel is open, especially uh, for these critical questions. And it's really the, that, you know, that human connection that we still strive for and need to. Um, the, the challenge is that the phone channel is being overwhelmed. Uh, we've talked to customers saying they're getting 50% increase in volumes in their calls. Some of these calls are longer and more complex um, and obviously emotional. Uh, and on the flip side, in terms of our ability to support that because we've moved more agents to, to home um, and they may not have the same support and same IT infrastructure they, they would in the office or in the contact center, um, there is um, potentially less availability. I just had a call this morning with one of the largest BPOs in the world, and they're, you know, they have 100,000 agents uh, at home, and not all of them are active. So this, the, 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 there's a big um, disconnect in terms of the, the need for this and our ability to support that. Um, so the reality is that I, I think organizations are facing this dilemma. On the one hand, you know, let's try to identify, let's say, the 20% of the calls that are coming in that are mission critical that we really want to make sure we support our customers. We can take the call, we can provide them, we can reassure them, we can give them new information, new initiatives, um, and uh, identify what's causing confusion and frustration and be able to resolve the root cause of those issues. Um, and on the flip side, identify maybe the 80% of calls that are coming in, but we can probably leverage other channels, self-service, digital channels. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the rest of the session, um, communities that can deflect some of this and provide accurate and immediate response without needing to talk to a person. And that's a challenge. And one of the tools that you may already have in place is speech analytics, which basically analyzes all the recorded, you know, all the calls are typically recorded anyways, if you are able to record the calls from home and we can set that up. Um, and then they analyze them. So we have an idea of what those calls are about and what the trends are, what are the new questions that are bubbling up. So it's a very powerful tool, especially in this time of uncertainty. What you can predict usually in everyday life today is unpredictable and is changing daily. And the main, you know, challenge is really being able to quickly distill and understand what the calls are about, the new questions, and be able to address that, make that separation of what's critical and what's less critical, what could be self-served, what needs to be handled by a human being, and how do we need to adapt to respond to these new inquiries from the customer side. Now, um, this is not just about the virus itself. Obviously, people who feel even just a small cold coming on are concerned for good reason, and they want to talk to somebody to see if they need to get tested. So, um, and, so there's health care concerns, but this is affecting a, a much broader set of almost everybody that has other concerns uh, that could be financial or government-related or insurance-related or retail or travel. These are just some of the examples of the verticals we've been working with. The first to get hit were actually airlines and travel because even months ago, they were getting many questions about cancellations of trips. Uh, we have airline customers. We have uh, cruise line customers, um, people wanting refunds, people, you know, worried about their loyalty program even, uh, you know, how does that affect because they're not traveling. And obviously, if they're going to travel, they have to travel. What's the risk of getting sick? Um, then it, it migrated to retail where people were, you know, first out of toilet paper, but then out of almost everything else um, and trying to order things online, worried about, you know, getting their delivery, worried even about, you know, can I, if I got my box from Amazon, can I touch it and I get sick from that? Um, a lot of new questions that we typically don't see. Um, then there were questions from insurance companies, you know, am I covered for this? You know, is this a, you know if I'm losing revenue from a small business, uh, is this an act of God? Um, healthcare issues, obviously, we continue to see as the number of cases grow, people wanting to get tested. Should they get tested? You know, just talked yesterday with a, you know, large healthcare insurance that they're trying to promote people using things like telemedicine and teledoc before they rush to an emergency room to not overwhelm hospitals. Uh, obviously, banking questions, everybody's concerned, um, especially small businesses, but also, you know, people that have lost their jobs and people who can't make a payment. Um, others are looking to potentially leverage the, the low rates to refinance. There's a lot of uh, spike in, in requests there. 
and government, which is playing a huge role here with the stimulus package. When am I going to get my payment? Can I get my payment? What if I didn't file online? So we see this is affecting almost every industry. And so, you know, in some, some organizations are getting questions from multiple topics around this. So um, we need to address all of those. And I'll touch on the base what Varent is doing to help you with that. Um, then we also need to look at, uh, as Kelly mentioned, on the agent side of things. So the customers are concerned and asking all these things, but agents are also in a new environment, working from home, probably don't have the same network of support, both in terms of human support. They can't just, if, they don't, if I don't know an answer in the contact center, I could probably ask somebody, some of my colleagues or my supervisor, a little bit more difficult now. Um, IT may not be the same, even bandwidth, people are having issues with bandwidth from home that may not be the same as they would in the office in the contact center. Um, and on the flip side, the, 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 the supervisors need that visibility. Can they support, um, you know, to make sure that, the, that their agents and their team members can provide the right information? Compliance is still very important. You don't want to give wrong information or misleading information. Uh, you want to be effective and respond quickly. Um, so a lot of the systems and policies and processes need to be adapted to this new environment to make sure that agents are able to support effectively and that they don't over, get overstressed. Um, and their environment that's maybe stressful at home um, is, is allowing them to do their work properly. Um, so some of the questions that we're seeing on that side, on the, on the uh, system side and processes side is, you know, how do we forecast the call volumes? You know, our algorithms that are based on last month or last year may not be relevant. We need to look at what happened yesterday, what call types came in, what were the volumes, what was the handle time, and how do we adjust our scheduling based on that? Um, Compliance, like I mentioned, you know, what's the process for evaluating compliance? Do we automate that? Do we look at um, reducing the, the amount of uh, questions we're going to review, but just review the critical ones? KPIs, you know, handle time, a five minute call might be fine in regular times, but today maybe we need to squeeze that to two minutes because we're, we're creating a bottleneck for other critical calls that may need to come in. So we need to adjust our KPIs and our targets and our goals. Um, knowledge management uh, needs to be updated almost daily with the new, you know, the, everybody's launching these initiatives, but we've seen, there was a CEO of one of our large telcos that announced an initiative that they won't charge any late payments, but we realized through speech that only one out of 10 calls, the, the, you know, the agent was educating the customer that they don't have to worry about the late payment, they're not going to be stuck with the fee. So there's a disconnect sometimes between what's happening uh, on the media, what's happening online, and what's happening with the agents at home. And we want to align that to close the loop um, and provide training, remote training. So these are all considerations and things that we need the insights, and then we need to take action on and applying these and tweaking these systems and processes uh, in place. So what Varent has done to try to help you with that, and I know it's a big challenge, is we've, we've first of all, built a, a set of categories. We started with the COVID-19 category to just identify calls about this, but we realized very quickly that almost all the calls are related to this these days. So we, we added 12 other categories related to the questions I, I touched on, the different industry-related questions and the different um, business impact, both, um, for example, desired employee language. Is, is the employee providing the right information, the right language, um, and, and also understanding the, the emotional aspects from the customer side? Um, so all those can be uploaded if you are an existing variant speech customer. We can upload that for you, or you can easily upload. We can send you those files. Um, that's really quick uh, and can get you insights on these all questions very quickly. You can self-tune some of these if you like. Um, in addition, we realize the terminology itself has really changed. You know, coronavirus and COVID-19, these are almost, you know, new words in the dictionary, if you will, we've tuned the models to be able to more accurately identify those uh, before people were kind of looking for like the word corona near virus, which are all in the model. Now we, we can identify these new terminologies that, that are also changing daily uh, to some extent, and, and we can provide that tuning for free uh, remotely. Uh, we're doing that as we speak with many customers. If you want to take advantage of these categories and this tuning, um, just open a, a service uh, a support case with us uh, and we could provide you with the link for that um, and we can we will try to turn that around very quickly for you so you can get the insights you need to both listen to your customers and support your employees and help you get this through crisis and uh, again we hope and we assume that we'll all come out stronger after this uh, and thank you with that I'll Kelly pass it on to the next speaker. Great so uh, with that thank you Daniel and we will pass things over to Eli. Thank you both. So, 
really excited to talk about how we can do listening through surveys to ensure that we're understanding and capturing feedback from our customers in these unprecedented times. We tried to look at this kind of from three different perspectives and provide some best practices in each of these areas to help you fine tune. I think the important thing to understand here is we're, we're not trying to revolutionize CX programs and surveying. We're just trying to use potentially what's already in place to strengthen. So the first thing that we really feel that there's a need to do is really amplify the, the digital voice, double down on digital. As Daniel talked about, call centers are becoming overwhelmed. Brick and mortar in location areas are, are obviously being shut down. Everybody's looking at digital now as being the front line to, to find out information uh, and to connect with, with companies and organizations uh, in these challenging times. Create a hub. If you don't have a hub in place, let's, let's, let's make sure we're working towards one to, to post executive messages, to provide special offers, offers. Really simply just provide a single point of reference for your customers to better understand what's going on. I had a, a, a client ask the other day, what, what should we be doing? Uh, I think it's important to just make sure your customers, your visitors understand what your role is in all of this um, and try to simplify and ensure that you're establishing clear expectations uh, for those that are coming and looking for information in terms of what they can find and how you can help. Leverage existing listing posts. If you If you have surveys in place, if you have uh, emails that are going out, look at those as opportunities to redirect people to the hub. You know, survey thank you pages is a great opportunity to once again reiterate that there's dedicated information capable of helping and providing uh, a resource. Um, as we talked about with, with locations and, and contact centers uh, reducing in size or transitioning home, uh, you know, don't forget the concept of kind of uh, in, uh, indirect feedback as it relates to challenges in location and contact centers. I'm sure there's a number of surveys out there that are capturing frustrations from customers as it relates to interactions in the store and contact center. Use your, your text analytics applications to help filter and identify where there's opportunities to improve contact center and, and location experiences if they exist. And then I think the final piece here is if you have digital technology capable of providing uh, opportunities for communication with customers, think about how you can transition that to support uh, your employee population. Certainly employees are going through an extraordinary time right now. Many are transitioning uh, to a home environment that may not be set up to, to function uh, and, and provide the customer uh, experience and, and care that they necessarily are used to. So. At the end of this, amplifying your digital voice is really going to provide access to customers, employees for listening, communication, and managing expectations. I think I would really under underline managing expectations because once again, that's the, the best thing we can do here is just to help uh, establish what we're capable of doing and supporting. Shift your listening. Shift your listening is, is, is all about reassessing what your priorities are today. This is a, a little bit of a look at what's happening within the data. Um, survey responses are skyrocketing. Uh, we've seen, in some cases, employees go, or I'm sorry, not employees, clients go from 1,000 survey responses in the month of January to 150,000 responses in the month of March. So with that, you need to, to better understand what your priorities are as it relates to measurement. Uh, should you be assessing where you're measuring, what segments you're trying to focus on. Uh, is brand measurement something that makes sense given these times? If it's not, where should you potentially reposition surveys to better capture low-hanging fruit opportunities? Do you need 150,000 completes in a month? Uh, probably not. The, there's a huge challenge certainly with just filtering through all of those responses to find the actionable data. So maybe consider reducing sampling percentages in certain areas or standing up um, new opt-in feedback to look for greater opportunities to, to identify low-hanging fruit. Uh, it's once again, pause. Think about what your objectives are. Think about what those KP, KPIs are today and ask yourself, have they shifted? If they've shifted, you probably need to look at potentially shifting your measurement uh, focus.
if we shift those priorities, we should have, give, your, give yourself an opportunity to find those insights in the moment. Very fluid situation today, constantly changing. So we need to make sure we're staying in tune with, with those shifts and understanding where we can prioritize actions to, to ultimately make better decisions uh, and turn around quick, uh, address needs quickly for our customers and our visitors. We have this data. The, the, the thing that we have to understand with this data is that there's a need to make sure we are sharing and being transparent. And, and sharing and transparency is, is for both our customers as well as our employees. I think this is another a, a story from a recent conversation with a client. Um, you know, there's been a lot of fears around uh, measuring in this time. Uh, and one of the fears is we're getting a lot of requests for things that we cannot accommodate today. And that's from both uh, customers as well as employees. I think it's, it's so essential to know where those challenges are. I think it's so essential to, uh, to communicate, uh, certainly internally, and to provide information to those groups that can help make change in relation to the feedback that's being captured. But I also think there's an opportunity to be honest and transparent. If you don't have a solution today as it relates to those challenges, it's okay to say that. It's okay to say we're listening. We hear you have frustrations as it relates to this, and we're working towards a solution. We'll let you know as soon as it's in place. That's managing expectations. That's being transparent, honest, open. I think that is going to get you so much further than, than potentially trying to hide or or, or, or move those challenges to the back burner uh, and not create opportunities for, for that transparency. When you're, when you're sharing data or socializing data, just a couple best practices to think about. Know your audience. Not everybody in the organization needs to see every piece of information. Try to target the, the, the data that makes most sense, that provides immediate opportunities for success to improve the experience. Uh, make the data digestible. Digestible means that, that one, you're, you're not overwhelming uh, even those that need the information with too much information, uh, as well as the, the, the frequency or the reoccurrence of the information that's being shared. Um, it may not be an every day. Maybe it's weekly. Uh, you know, the challenge is, given how fluid the situation is, uh, there, there's, there's a need to be constantly uh, paying attention to what's coming in. But once again, don't overwhelm yourself. And then the final kind of best practice as it relates to socialization, lead with the images. Try to allow the images to tell the story. Don't overwhelm uh, uh, those that are receiving the data with, with, with too much information. So to kind of summarize this, you know, improve expectation management, reduce those contact center calls, let customers and employees know they're being listened to and informed, and then help create that unified message. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Think about all those potential silos or channels that are, that are working with customers. Share data across those channels, create opportunities for learning, um, and, and certainly, once again, provide that unified message that will help best to establish expectations. In closing here, you know, as you're, as you're thinking through these things, understand you're not alone. You, you, if you're an existing client of ours, you've got a dedicated team that's capable of helping to, to work through these, advise you on, on, on opportunities to, to reposition surveys, to listen differently, to ensure you're getting the, the data you need to help drive that change. Um, if, you, if you're interested in more information as it relates to kind of the survey portion of this, there is a, a, an hour long deeper dive on this. Uh, please take a look at that download. And once again, if you have any questions and need support, understand we're here to support you. So, so thank you very much. I'm gonna pass it to Tracy. Thank you, Eli, I appreciate that. And again, for everyone who's joining us, um, pleasure to spend an hour here or so with you during your day. As mentioned, uh, my name is Tracy Malingo. I currently work with Varian's Intelligent Self-Service uh, Business Group. And for those who may or may not know, we're focused on a handful of, of different self-service offers around communities, as well as voice and digital self-service. But what I'm going to be spending some time today to talk to you about is really kind of focused packages uh, that align to the theme, right, from variants of here to help, 
uh, around the IVA and some of our intelligent virtual assistance um, offers that we have for our existing customers and how we can help you and, and adapt with you during this time. So as Daniel mentioned, as everyone knows here, as we look at, at even a lot of the folks that are attending, uh, no industry right, is unaffected by this very rapidly changing landscape. And although it does affect every vertical, what we're seeing is, is that there's even uniqueness right within each vertical that's occurring. And so uh, the information that Daniel discussed around the real-time speech and having that kind of listen and inform things is, is extremely critical. And we know that not only are customers, our company's customers facing uh, these challenges and cases, but also their employees, right? And so from Barron's perspective, kind of our opportunity was to uh, really kind of go heads down and figure out how can we holistically help both our companies um, with their consumers as well as their employees during this time um, to immediately add some benefit for them uh, while we continue as a group, right, to kind of listen, understand, and adapt to this. And as a result of that, we've come up with two uh, packages um, that I'm going to share with you that are available to our various uh, digital and invoice sales service customers, those who are leveraging our current IVA. And we'll tell you some of the trends that we're seeing with that, some of the results that we're seeing with that, and we think it may be valuable for you as you're taking a look at some of, of your opportunities as well. So as we, as we navigate these times, uh, this irregular business that we're all seeing in one form or another, obviously um, for our customers who have supported or who have intelligent virtual assistants, uh, we're really looking at what, what is occurring in real time and right now with both their interactions with their consumers. And when we think about the purpose for having an IVA, it's often around augmentation and automation, right? And so how do we take those needs and really adapt them to what is occurring right now to make sure that we're addressing some of these volumes and considerations, as well as, as employees? We're seeing, obviously, a significant shift in the work environment. And for a handful, of, if not a lot, of those employees who are making that change, uh, there's all kinds of new considerations for some many have never worked from home before. And, and while Variance is, is supporting and helping customers with everything from uh, managing that workforce and compliance regulations, from a self-service standpoint, uh, we want to make sure that we're enabling those employees as well during kind of this very unsettling time. We continue to look conversationally at what's occurring across all of our digital and voice self-service applications today. And from those insights, right, we're starting to gather some good sentiment and, and impact of what's occurring. And we continue to do what we refer to as kind of evidence-based development within the language models and the packages that we're presenting here in this presentation. So we'll, we'll show you a little bit of how we've seen those shifts and how we're adapting to those as well. And then we've always talked about automation being vital, but I think what most organizations are realizing today is that um, vital <laughs> is taking on a whole new meaning and even aligning to business continuity and needs, and, and whether it be augmentation, um, whether it be supporting different environments, uh, we know that a lot of you are, are kind of facing this and, and working towards it. So let's talk about the two packages that we have um, and customers who have deployed them already. We've been very quickly to do that and kind of some of the results and the instant feedback from that so you guys have some insights into what's going on. So first is, is for very customers who have uh, consumer-facing IVAs uh, that they've engaged at. What we have done is we have developed a language understanding pack for them. And the language understanding pack is something they can add to their additional, to their current language model uh, that they have that supports very specific kind of COVID-19 language in the unit. Um, it's got proactive messaging on it so that we can hopefully do some of the augmentation automation that we're talking about. Um, and address those types of inquiries that are coming in that maybe aren't the uh, life critical ones that Daniel mentioned within the speech, um, but more kind of general based and holistic. Uh, as mentioned, we have this already in production with a handful of customers. We'll quickly just take a look at a use case here so you can see what that looks like. Amtrak, uh, as you can imagine, <laughs> is certainly dealing with the regular business operations at this time. Uh, Julie uh, is Amtrak's Intelligent Virtual Assistant that's been in production for about eight years, um, quite honestly, and, it, and it's dealt with a number of irregular opportunities, whether that be um, natural disasters, et cetera. And so 
Uh, what we've done is, is they were one of the first to quickly deploy a, a COVID-19 kind of language pack within uh, their environment. Now, what we saw was that we were able to get that deployed very rapidly, and at first it was very high-level information. And so from a training perspective, what we saw was that, you know, during the first week, right, consumers were mainly concerned about, um, you know, the pandemic broadly impacting them. And then from a second week, right, things started to get a little bit more specific about travel routes, calculations, impacts. And then throughout kind of third week, right, we're seeing things start to focus now very kind of geographically around hotspots and sanitizing practices. So the COVID package that we have created for this particular customer um, that we have deployed within, although it initially was a very holistic approach, what we're doing is we're starting to layer down into that and continue to evolve with them. That's part of our commitment is to make sure that we continue to kind of broaden this and, and understand along with them. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's insights from these conversations that we can feed and, and support that. So again, for all existing customers who have a consumer-facing application, we do have these COVID-19 packages. Um, we've reached out to all of our customers, but if there's anyone on this call right that has additional questions, please let us know. Now, employees, right, uh, is, is certainly also facing their own challenges, and so what we've done for them um, from a parent's perspective is we have built a, a work-from-home assistant. So a work-from-home virtual assistant, um, intelligent assistant, that has understanding about Okay, I'm a, I'm a worker who's now having to work in the same environment. And, uh, you know, how do I print? Um, do I have regulations requirements around that? Are there certain things that I can or, or cannot be doing? Um, what conferencing systems do I use? How do I get to different things? And so we have found by addressing and looking at conversations that were coming into our current systems, about 20, 25 or so different kind of processes and, and needs that were happening for these work from home um, employees in this new environment. And so we have taken that package, we've made that available again um, to all of our existing uh, customers that are currently leveraging that. Um, and I think we're seeing some great results uh, quickly deployed and uh, we're able to get um, into customers' hands in about four days. Um, from that perspective, uh, we've got the insights, around 25 or so topics that help that immediately available to tens of thousands of uh, employees that for our customers and answering thousands of questions a day. As you can imagine, one of the great stresses, right, that we're seeing our customers having to deal with is as their employees kind of embrace this new environment, uh, IT help desks, <laughs> HR, uh, all of those uh, support organizations are being overwhelmed, um, not to mention on top of all the other stresses that they have for trying to enable the business in this, in this different time. And so we wanted to very quickly provide some type of intelligence from a self-service standpoint to help those employees out and to help those, those departments within the company um, enable themselves and, and answer those questions. So again, um, for those on the call and for those who listen to this later for existing uh, parent self-service customers, we're happy, right? It's our honor and our, our privilege right, to be able to offer this package to you um, to leverage within your environment. Uh, we quickly kind of look out and we start to think about how we apply uh, this knowledge and this information outside of just the immediate need. Um, we are really taking a look at kind of all of the conversations and, and the changes that are going to be happening within businesses for both their consumers and employees long term. And so for us, uh, although these are initial packages that are really here to help and assist our current partners and customers, uh, we also are continuing to develop and, and adhere to what we need to do to make sure that we're planning for success, right? Because we will get through this, and when we do, uh, things will look very much different, right? I believe for all of us, from how we support our business continuity plans to how we engage with automation to support augmentation and support our employees that are and so from Verant, right, please know that, that we're taking all of the information, all the intelligence that's coming across all of these channels and really looking to apply this in the best way for you to make sure that, that we can help you continue to be successful. So with that, Kelly, I'm going to hand that back over to you and appreciate uh, everybody's time. Thanks, Tracy, and thanks, everybody. Um, before we wrap up, I did want to quickly hit on a few other ways in addition to the, the three um, what the three speakers talked about today. Some other ways 
you can consider adapting some of your other engagement processes uh, in light of the current events today. Um, so first, let's look at surveys. Eli talked a bit about these already. Um, the information that your, your customers sharing in these surveys can sometimes show a need for an immediate human response. So there's a couple things you can do to follow up on these surveys and engage immediately by using some of your other digital channels. So one other idea would be to connect your surveys in with your chat solution, be it Varent's chat or whoever you're using for chat, um, so that when your survey responses indicate that this is a, a particular time when customer service needs to be engaged immediately, that can automatically pop into a chat session and engage an agent. Uh, or alternatively, your survey results could be routed into uh, email handling if there's uh, intents that again indicate that follow-up would be helpful but perhaps less immediate uh, than uh, with a live chat. This would allow time for an employee to perhaps research uh, what the customer's need is and then offer a solution. So those are just two additional ways to use those digital channels uh, in conjunction with the surveys to ensure your customers are feeling heard and, and that their needs their needs are being met. Uh, moving on from surveys, talking about uh, the intelligent virtual assistants that Tracy just spoke about. So a lot of times when customers are using these intelligent virtual assistants, they find that it's helpful to link that solution, again, with something like a live chat solution. And that would ensure that when your customer's need requires a human to help them complete it, they're able to make that transition seamlessly. So the customer service representative could be engaged right in the context of that virtual assistant conversation. And that would allow their customer to complete that request. Um, and it's importantly, without having to shift all the way to a more expensive channel like the phone, um, which is, as Daniel mentioned, the phone is likely getting pretty overwhelmed right now. And you want to uh, keep that channel as open as you can for the most urgent needs. Um, so finally, let's talk just briefly about these other digital channels. Um, because digital channels are incredibly important right now um, because you are getting this big, big spike in customer inquiries and looking to deflect the interactions that, that you can, the ones that are appropriate to, to deflect them away from that phone channel. And Tracy talked about using self-service to do this with the virtual assistant. Um, but digital channels are another great option because they are, they kind of, bridge that gap for your customers who still do want human interaction, um, but you want to use a channel that's of a bit lower cost and free up the capacity on your phone channel for those most urgent requests. So uh, likely you already have some kind of email or chat options on your website. If you don't, please get in touch and we can help you stand something up quickly there. But assuming you already have some sort of digital channels available, um, some recommendations of things you should be doing today uh, with those existing solutions to help optimize them. The first recommendation um, is really from kind of a, a design perspective. Make those applications very, very prominent on your website so that when a person comes to your site in order to find your phone number, they're going to immediately see that these chat and email options are available and even indicate that that may be a better avenue for them, a less frustrating way for them to actually get in touch with you if you are experiencing uh, extremely high phone volumes. Um, and then secondly, make sure you're enabling the agents in these channels with all of the updated predefined answers and knowledge articles and templates to account for these new types of inquiries that we've been talking about with all of our other speakers. So make sure when somebody's coming to you with a chat, that those chat agents are also enabled uh, with all the ways to properly and efficiently uh, answer those new types of questions. So again, just some uh, additional tips on things that you can be doing with those digital channels that, that you currently uh, have in place today. So we've heard from all three of our speakers, and we do want to take questions uh, from you guys. I, I have seen several um, coming in, and please uh, continue to type them. We have about 10, 15 minutes um, before we wrap up, so we will try to get to 
as many of the questions as we can, and I will try to um, moderate them and, and send them to the right people uh, as, as best as I can. Um, so let's see. Let's first um, talk to Eli. Can you just give us a little clearer of, of a definition? You talked about this idea of a hub. Make sure you have a hub. Can you talk a little bit more for people who may not be familiar with what you mean? What do you mean when, when you talk about a hub? Yeah, I think it's really just having a central location for all of your information relevant to COVID-19 today. So if COVID-19 is impacting multiple aspects of service functionality for your company, don't distribute that information across those sections that may exist today. Create a centrally located um, you know, hub or, or area within your site that, that has answers to, to commonly asked questions or relevant information. Great. Uh, thank you. Let's see. This next one looks like it's for Tracy. Sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around. All the, the, the questions are uh, to all the different speakers. Um, so because of our hold times and shortage of agents right now, our other channels are getting slammed. Is there a limit to the number of people your IVA can support? Oh. <laughs> I'm sure there's, okay, thanks, Kelly. There's probably a, a lot of people who are experiencing this right now um, as we take a look at it. So, so one of uh, the things uh, with the Verant uh, Intelligent Virtual Assistant solution is it is specifically built for kind of enterprise-grade projects and products. And we have actually been in the business in production for about 15 years, um, and during that time have seen various different peaks in a regular business um, opportunities. And so from a standpoint of, of how many inputs and questions can our IVA handle, it's in the hundreds and thousands per second. And uh, we do a considerable amount of low testing really to be able to support these kind of uh, peak and, and enterprise level opportunities. So no concern there as far as able to, um, like I said, support the needs that you have there from a, a capacity and a scalability standpoint. Great. Uh, let me stick with you then um, so that I can try to have some organization here. This one's also for you. Our company has a few different chatbots that are not from Verant, but the resources that are working on these have been pulled uh, to focus on other initiatives. Are we able to take advantage of this offer if we don't have technical resources available? Okay. Yeah. So certainly, uh, technical resources right now as people and, and companies are augmenting and, and adapting to this new environment mm -hmm. are becoming um, more and more limited they focus on those things. One of the things uh, that we do have within Verant uh, Intelligence Health Service and specifically with the Intelligent Virtual Assistant is we offer actually a fully managed service for our customers. Some of our customers choose to do the work themselves, uh, but for many of our customers, uh, we provide um, the whole implementation and, and deployment development and ongoing process for them. Uh, we have a number of folks in best practices. We're staffed from the business continuity standpoint to support this. And so for those who have chatbots, <laughs> maybe they're not parents, but other chatbots, and they understand and they see that there's value in being able to automate some of these discussions, but those resources have maybe been put on something else, if you still desire to move forward with any of the packages or any of the items that we talked about, um, we absolutely have the team and resources to support you through that. Um, and so we should still be able to drive some successful outcomes. Great. Daniel, I'm going to move to you. Um, we have several questions that are on a similar topic, so I'm going to try to combine them. Um, they, they basically are looking for more information and instructions on how to get these speech categories, what they need to do, and then also kind of as a related follow-up question, um, is Verant going to be doing the tuning and setting up of the categories, or are they providing instructions so that we do it? Um, so can you just kind of give a, a little bit more of a step-by-step -step of, of what people should be doing? Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Um, sure. So um, first of all, we are planning to do it for you. Um, again, we have customers who do their own tuning, and that's fine. We can provide guidance for those. And uh, for, uh, but we are happy to support this free of charge and do the tuning for them. And uh, I think there's some background notes. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. 
Oh, okay, perfect. So um, we we will basically, if you open up a service ticket, we can send you a link how to do that. But basically, there's usually somebody in your organization that um, has direct contact with the variant support. If there's a problem, they open up the ticket so we can track it. We will uh, assign somebody immediately from Varen to log in and apply the categories and do the tuning. We can tune tr terms like COVID-19, uh, coronavirus, as well as others. You know, if you have other specific to your environment or you're seeing in the calls, we can tune those as well so the system is more accurate for these new term terms. Uh, we plan to turn this around very quickly, two to three business days in most cases. Um, so um, that's really the process. Um, and uh, there's a set, like the categories, there's a set of 13 categories. Some, obviously you can pick and choose from those. You can deactivate ones that are not relevant. Some are specific to different verticals. Some are more generic that may apply to everyone. Um, it's really a great starting point, but again, you can easily customize it. And we can also set up a, a remote session where we can work with you and try to help you customize it for your environment. But it should give you some uh, value immediately out of the box uh, and save you some time rather than doing it yourself. Great. Uh, to add to that, you mentioned verticals, and we did get a question if there was any insurance-specific uh, categories as well as in other languages. Okay. So right now, um, what we've set up is the ing they're all in English. There is a specific one for insurance, but even within insurance, there's things that are more healthcare insurance and other insurance. But but again, they could be split into in more granular categories, uh, but there is uh, definitely uh, – at least one or two that are focused on the insurance vertical. Um, and this is from input from some of our customers and consultants working with insurance companies. For languages, um, we are working to translate the categories to other languages. We, we have already uh, roughly 70 or 80 languages deployed, so that's going to take some time. But um, uh, our local teams, our regional teams, are working to translate them. So if you have other languages other than English, uh, we can definitely support that. It may take some time to make sure that those are translated and tuned effectively, uh, but generally we can do it uh, for, for any language once those are translated. Great. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Eli, I'm going to switch over to you for a couple. Let's see. Um, how do I deal with the wide variance in CSAT and NPS scores right now? How can I set expectations with leadership with all of this rapid change? Yeah, so just to, just for clarity, CSAT is customer satisfaction score, and, and NPS is net promoter score. Um, you know, certainly NPS tends to have a more of a, a significantly more of a variance, um, so it may be important to take a closer look at CSAT. But I think both are really important today uh, for two reasons. One, it can provide you uh, an alert uh, to something changing uh, or something that might need uh, attention. So if you see significant swings in either or both from week to week or day to day, it might, might be a sign for a deeper dive or a closer look at potentially what's causing that. But I think more importantly, um, the, the, your CSAT and, and MPS, if, if you are seeing significant swings in this period of time, it, hopefully you've been doing continuous measurement using both of those so it provides greater context on what the overall impact is to your customers given the situation. And then at the same time, it, it can help you help to provide you awareness of when you're potentially moving out um, uh, of these challenges, whether it because the, the state of the world is changing or because you're actually uh, capturing the feedback, um, identifying opportunities to improve the experience, applying those changes, and in turn improving the experience as a whole. So I think the, the I think the pitch to leadership is, you know, we we need this is this is the the pulse, this is the EKG. Um, as it relates to to uh, our our customers, and, and and there's no important no more important time now than to be measuring, so we have an understanding of 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 how we're doing and what the impact is. Great, thank you. Uh, while I have you, let me uh, give you one more that I found. Uh, we're getting a lot of pressure right now to turn our listening posts off because we want to focus on immediate needs. Any advice for us? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, uh, to a certain degree, I would say see previous answer, um, you know, but I, I don't disagree, though, that there might be some areas that don't need to be measured today. So I think it comes back to that concept of reevaluating what your objectives are 
because uh, I think there's it's very possible that um, you know pulling something down and repositioning it somewhere else might be the right call. Um, I, I think once again, it's just important to have those strategic conversations around goals, objectives, KPIs as it relates to the CX program or measurement in general. Uh, and then once again, take into consideration you need some sort of pulse uh, as well as some sort of point of reference as it relates to, to measurement um, pre and post this, this situation. Great, thank you. Okay, there's a lot of questions coming in, um, but so I, well, we're probably going to have to limit it, but I think we can do uh, one, maybe two more. Um, so Tracy, this one is back to you. Um, will the chatbot detect the critical words? Um, is there a repository of keywords? Where is the, the language pack coming from? Thanks, <laughs> Kelly, and uh, hopefully my volume is a little bit better here. I know there was some feedback that maybe it was a little bit low. Um, so great question. This is probably one, uh, whoever set this one in, I would say, why don't you reach out to myself and the team because there's there's a handful of discussion, but at the highest level, uh, Varen's intelligent virtual assistants, um, they leverage our own proprietary language models and our proprietary engine. What we have done in order to detect these, these intense or ideas that are coming in around uh, COVID and other scenarios that are specific to maybe work from home new environments is that we have built uh, the appropriate, um, what we refer to as units, but they're really intense language models that have all the appropriate concepts and vocabularies in them, and then we've applied those uh, to our broader language models. Uh, so the reference, uh, the language path is our own. It's one that we have built. We're able to um, continually review and update that. Um, it's more than just keywords. Uh, we take a look, obviously, that informs some of it, but there's also a lot of work that's done under the covers um, with the system in order to understand specific concepts and patterning of those so that we're not getting a lot of um, ties or false information, uh, and then we deploy those across our, our general system. So I know that's pretty uh, deep, and uh, we could certainly go a lot deeper, so I would just encourage whoever sent that one in to probably, again, just reach out to myself or their team member within Barrett who supports them directly, and let's dive into that and show you what we've done. Great, thanks Tracy. Now I'm looking through these questions and, and many of them are uh, regarding one of the three saying, I want this now, how do I do it? So we will follow up with you uh, rather than me going through those uh, one by one. Um, so we've only got about five minutes, and I do want to um, give you some, some next steps of things to do. So any questions that we missed, I do apologize that we weren't able to take them live, but we will follow up with all of them. And again, we'll, we'll get in touch with um, those of you who reached out to uh, want to get started on some of those offers. So I mentioned that this is part of our educational webinar series. So. Uh, please uh, pay attention to the ones coming up and join the ones that sound like they are of interest to you. Some of the next webinars that you'll see next week, we are very privileged to have Donna Fluss from DMG Consulting, who has been in the industry for forever, without, without sounding uh, <laughs> that, that Donna has any uh, aging. Donna never ages, but she uh, is a expert for, for several decades, and she is going to answer all of your questions that you may have. This is really going to be uh, an open Q&A. She's not going to um, just talk for an hour. She really wants your questions. So if you want to hear from an industry expert and get your questions answered, join next week to talk to Donna. And then following that, we have a session around citizen engagement. So anyone who is in the public sector and has specific needs and want to talk specifically about public sector, uh, please sign up for that webinar as well. You can get uh, to the registration page from the resource list in your console. Also, that resource list has a bunch of other great assets that you may want to read uh, to follow up and get more information. Um, and if you have any other questions or you want to uh, learn more about anything we talked about or even you have questions that are unrelated to what we talked about today, please reach out to us. The whole point of this series is we want to be here to help you get through this time in any way that we can. 
So please reach out to us. If you don't know who to reach out to, you can always just email info at verant.com. That's a good starting point. But if you know your account executive, please feel free to reach out to them. They are standing by uh, with lots of information ready to help you. Also, don't forget that uh, you can easily sign up for the next webinar uh, by just looking on the left of your screen right now. There's a, an easy call to action there that you can just grab to sign up for the next webinar. So I hope this was full of some information that can help you right now, and I hope to uh, join many of you on the coming webinars in the next few weeks. So with that, I think we will wrap up, and thank you all for joining, and thank you all to my speakers today.